for many, many years, um, PV has been considered uh, an older person's disease. And, and we typically hear that, uh, you know, the average patient is in their 60s. And um, from my observational analysis out there, I'm seeing a heck of a lot of patients that are being diagnosed in their 20s, 30s, 40s. And I've got to believe that, in, that that's shifting the average age, perhaps in the 50s. Um, I wonder if you can give us an update and uh, shed some light on that. Uh, absolutely correct. Uh, the, it, is, it has always been, or for the longest time, it has been thought of as the disease of the older uh, patient. And the median age has been reported uh, in several studies in the literature. And even if you look at our national registry in the U.S., um, in the early 60s, 60 to 65. Um, our uh, data suggests that the median age of diagnosis is uh, around 54. Uh, so it's actually earlier. Now, there's different ways that this could be possible. One of them is that uh, the disease could be detected earlier. You know, if you're, if you're at an institution or a place where uh, you are more vigorous with screening and testing and patients you know, go in to see their physicians more regularly, the PV could be detected earlier. It could be diagnosed per the WHO criteria um, with the JAK2 testing and the bone marrow biopsy. That could be done earlier and it could be found earlier in the disease course. Um, so that is one explanation. The other explanation is it is possible that the dynamics of this disease, the epidemiology of it are changing in, in this day and age that younger patients are getting PV for one reason or another. Now, we don't know of any particular environmental factors that, that associate with PV, but I do agree with the observation that certainly it seems that younger patients are getting PV. Um, and it's a question of whether it's just being detected earlier uh, or there's a reason for that. Um, I will say that there was a very important st Danish study that shed some light on uh, sort of the precursor to PV and MPNs called CHIP, C-H-I-P, which is clonal hematopoiesis of indeterminate potential. Um, that means that there is a mutation that's present that's causing clonal hematopoiesis or blood cell production at a clonal level um, that has indeterminate potential or unknown clinical significance. Um, that used to be the case until more recently, we now recognize that having CHIP is also associated with some of the same risks that we see with PV, but to a much lesser, lower degree. So the Danish study that I was referring to is a population study that um, looked at the presence of these mutations, including JAK2 and calreticulin, uh, in uh, roughly around 20,000 individuals in the population. Um, so these are presumably healthy. Some of them had some illnesses, uh, but they were tested and, and it was found that approximately 3% of them had a JAK2 mutation. So that is actually a very high number because if you put that in perspective, three in a hundred having a JAK2 mutation when PV as a disease is more like on the order of one to 10,000, um, there clearly is something there. There's a story to tell. So the prevalence of these mutations now is more than we've anticipated. And part of it is owing to uh, the improvement in technology in detecting these mutations at very low level. Um, so CHIP patients can have these mutations at a allele frequency of 1% or 2%. Um, so really only one or 2% of their uh, blood cells are JAK2 mutated, but now we're detecting those patients. So with the knowledge that there is a JAK2 mutation, when patients develop blood count abnormalities, that generally leads to further investigation that establishes the diagnosis of PV. So in, in this same study, the 3% of patients who had the JAK2 mutation, um, I think around 2 to 3% actually had an MPN. So Putting it in the flip side, 97% of those with JAK2 mutations did not have an MPN or did not have a diagnosis of an MPN. So um, there, is, there is a spectrum. I think there's a spectrum and uh, to show you how many patients there, there could be, um, I, I truly think that the age gap or the change in the age of diagnosis is primarily related to the timing of testing uh, and, um, you know, when patients are coming to medical attention. And I think as, as time goes by, we're diagnosing it earlier and earlier because we are better at detecting these, 
diseases. Music